Hi, I'm Heather from Hannah Booktubes, and today is Couples with More Than One Book. This is difficult to find in contemporary specifically. A lot of romance series follow a different couple for each book. You see your couple from the previous book as reoccurring side characters and you know the world is enmeshed and you get everyone's books and I love that. I love a series of standalones but sometimes I do love getting to follow that one couple. So Today I wanted to kind of narrow it down recommendation wise so these are ones that specifically the pacing of the couple really works for me over several books. I don't feel like we're having to wait too long. I don't feel like we're stopping and starting and stopping and starting. And I, I'm not a fan of the third act breakup. I'm not a fan of multiple breakups, miscommunication, any of that. So I am picking ones that I liked the pacing of the couple and I will tell you kind of what it is. And I also have some bonus series where I think if I picked it up for the first time today, um, it might not work for me as well, but they're in my Hall of Fame, basically, and I feel like I can't just leave them out. <laughs> they're kind of with an asterisk, I feel like, that I loved it when I read it. And I love it on rereads. I've reread most of them, but if I were picking it up for the first time, it might not work as well. Which obviously, if I'm recommending it to you, then you'd be picking up for the first time. So asterisk on those. But we're going to start off with my very, very, very favorite. <laughs> and that would be the Kate Daniel series by Alona Andrews. This is a urban fantasy series. It is a 10 book series that follows one main couple. You're following them over the course of several years. And they're honestly just a normal couple. They handle things the way that I feel like a lot of couples do. I'm I've been married for 12 years. I just had my anniversary this last week. And so sometimes I really do enjoy <laughs> getting to see like a long-term couple. And Alona Anders, if you don't know, is a husband and wife writing duo. So they are a married couple that have been together for a long time writing a couple that's together for a long time and I think they do a fantastic job of it. So the world of Kate Daniels is our world but with magic and there was technology and then there's magic and it comes in waves. And when we first meet our characters, Kate Daniels is a mercenary who is trying to fly under the radar and Curran is the Beast Lord, the Lord of the Shifters. He is the most powerful shifter and Kate is a little bit of an anomaly and they're definitely a little bit enemies to lovers. Curran especially, well I shouldn't say that, they can't stand each other. They are kind of like attracted to each other but they genuinely kind of think of each other as terrible insufferable people that they would rather not have to spend time with and of course they do have to spend time together it takes them about three or four books to really be together although there are incidents in each book and once they're together they're together there are a couple of things that could definitely break them up right but they're not going to break up. They're going to work through it. They're going to talk through it like you do if you're in a committed relationship with someone or any sort of relationship with someone and you care about them and you want to maintain that relationship. And the things that are thrown at them are things that could be reasons to leave each other, right? But like they are always in each other's corner. They always are the one. They're the one person that like understands. And so you have like this long-term couple that's dealing with politics and magic and life and death <laughs> all of the time and yet they make each other coffee in the morning I can't admit like that's like a special part don't even do I'll, I will tear up right now <laughs> Lona Andrews really does a fantastic job because most of their series are not standalone romances. Most of their couples, you do have to read three books at least in order to get their happily ever after. And they do that really incredibly well. But because Kate Daniels is 10 books and that's such a long time to be following one couple, I cannot begin to tell you how well I think they pulled that off. Next is the Criminal Intention series, the first book of which is The Cardigans by Cole McCade. This is a male-male, queer, diverse, detective story. So I'm going to tell you right now, this is not pro-police and it's not like copaganda or anything. If you love a crime show, then this is going to hit those beats for you, um, like a crime procedural show. But 
I feel like if you are like, oh, I don't know how I feel about all that, then this is like the series for you because it's not going to ignore the issues. It's going to talk about them directly. It's going to talk about people that are working within the system and how the system can abuse them as well if they don't play along. And of course, the civilians that they come in contact with, whether they're the victim of a crime or not, and just like the level of prejudice that can be carried out in the system in the United States specifically and everybody is queer everybody <laughs> is BIPOC everybody has their own thing and our main characters we have a Korean lieutenant that just came from LA so he's a new transfer and we, we have a detective that is older and has been on the force there at Baltimore PD for a long time and they are both queer and there is someone that is targeting queer young men and they specifically request to be on the case and because they both requested they are forced to work together and that is the start of their partnership. It takes them six books to become a couple. The books are pretty short and they do read like the episode of a TV show and so I think it works really well with the pacing and there are three seasons worth of books in this series. I've only read through book six. There are extensive content warnings for each book and those are listed at the front but as far as the couple themselves they are both so prickly and they really have a hard time laying each other in and they hurt each other and make mistakes without being malicious and they have to fix those mistakes and they have to fix uh, patch up those holes in their relationship whether they're just partners on the force who are attracted to each other or an actual couple and I think that those um, couple beats are hit really well. Then I have There Are No Saints, The Sinners Duet by Sophie Lark. I feel like a lot of times with duets it's difficult to get it right. It's difficult to have both books be equal to each other, be any good. And I think that this one really pulls that off. This is a dark new adult serial killer romance and it's creepy and it's gruesome and he kind of wants to kill her, kind of wants to keep her, that type of thing. So lots of content warnings, but we have three different artists basically. She is trying to get into the art scene there and then we have these two competing artists that have been at it for a long time and they are also competing serial killers. and he kind of notices this girl kind of notices her style she's like a waif is how you should envision her she kind of draws his interest but he moves along with his life but the other serial killer slash artist notices his attention and so he actually like kidnaps and tries to kill this girl and leaves her as a present for serial killer a and serial killer a um is like this is a trap and just leaves her there to die and then kind of is thinking about her and just like feels like he should dot his eyes and cross his teeth. So he goes to her house and she walks out alive and well. And she's seen him and she knows that he saw her and was like, mm, I'm gonna keep walking. So that starts his obsession and he starts worming his way into every part of her life. He's rich, he's powerful, yada yada. He makes it happen. And she does not know if he wants to kill her or keep her or what. She doesn't know about the other guy. She doesn't know a lot of what's happening. She just knows she was left in the woods for dead by a mysterious man. And the cat and mouse game, not only between our main couple, but them and the third party is really well done and is like crescendos at the right moment in book two. I feel like both books have great pacing. Both books have great pacing for the couple, for their steam, for their connection, for them deciding whether they're going to be forever or not. I loved both books and I, that hasn't happened in forever. Then I have Burn, which is Darken You by Suzanne Wright. It's the Darken You series. I only recommend the four books that are about this main couple. So our first four books follow this couple and then we have standalones of their friends. The fifth book, the first standalone, the trauma in that I felt was handled so poorly. I literally won't read her anymore. I hate it. I can tell you about it and I read it years ago and like I still get upset thinking about it. I just really, really, very much dislike it. 
but the first four books do follow the same couple and I loved them. So I recommend the first four books. So this is a demon lord basically. He's one of the most powerful demons in the world. No one really knows what type of demon he is and he has his domain basically in Las Vegas. Anything that, you know, has the vices. You also usually have a demon community and there's all sorts of demon politics going on and she is a demon as well but she is not very powerful maybe and also like her family is like kind of outlaw trailer park um I will light your car on fire if you look at me wrong that type of demon <laughs> Well, they have an interaction that turns out that she is his anchor. Demons have these anchors and it's basically, especially for a powerful demon, it would keep you from losing your mind. So you really need one, but not anyone can be one. And she's his anchor. Well, turns out she might also be his mate. And does she get kidnapped in every single book? Yes, she does. <laughs> But their relationship really progresses and she wants nothing to do with him at the beginning. And not only is he fascinated by her, but his demon as well. Demons are basically dual entities and they're very possessive and they're very obsessive and they're very, I'll burn the world down for you. And they match each other's energy with that so well. Like they are just as jealous and obsessive over each other. But at the same time, she is not as interested or is not motivated by a lot of the same things that he and other demons are and so he can never quite guess what she's going to do and that uh, fascinates him. And they have Ruthless Villains by Marion Blackwood. This is a fantasy romance series. It's very gimmicky. If you love villains <laughs> then this is for you. It has some repetitive phrasing but you know a gimmick works if it's the one for you. Like if it's your thing, then absolutely all day long, I will do that thing. Um, and so they have been trying to kill each other for years. Then we open up on another scene of them trying to kill each other. And then things happen politically and it looks like the heroes have a weapon that could actually wipe the villains out. So they really need to work together in order to, uh, have their mutual survival be a thing. <laughs> so they go on this mission together to try and solve this and um it's kinky, it's steamy, it's I don't like you but I'll sleep with you and it is also I can't trust you but I'm gonna trust you for this and also something that I love about this is every time they stab each other in the back that works for them. They're like absolutely that was a great move, great job babe. <laughs> I would have betrayed me too. Cross double betrayed you. <laughs> like they um really respect each other's evilness and their strength and their um what they've done to survive. And I love that it's it, they can do like the most terrible things to each other and it's not like how could you do this to me? It's like I'm going to hide away any emotion and it's going to be like that that's a good one but just wait till I get out of this and then I'm going to make you pay <laughs> so dearly for this moment of victory that you've achieved and it's great I will say I have only read through book three and they do tell each other that they love each other at the end of book three so I don't know how they work together as an established couple necessarily but they've kind of been an established couple without like confessing their feelings since book one and they you know have all this forced proximity but also we have to work together and I'm gonna trust you over the rest of them <laughs> and yeah I just kind of love them I don't I think technically there's like some issues but I love them and the covers are gorgeous and like are are what I want and um lots lots of knife to the throat lots of hand to the throat lots of also his magic can be used for sexy times and yeah they're just lethal and they love that about each other they love the mercilessness that each other brings to the table. All right, these are my bonus ones. So I have the Crossfire series, Bear to You by Sylvia Day. This is a billionaire romance. It's one of the originals. It's back in the Fifty Shades of Grey era. They have a six book series, five books, six books. I literally never get this right, but one of those. And she is also rich, so I like that balance. They both are survivors of SA and childhood SA and lots of difficult things. So be aware of that. There are a lot of 
problematic dynamics <laughs> in their relationship and also they break up like every single book now usually they break up for a very small section like the final chapter of the book they're broken up and then they get back together like the first chapter of the next book but it's a lot of drama it's a lot of drama in a very short amount of time <laughs> it's it's a lot and I love it and I've read it multiple times and do I think it's good? No. No, I don't. Do I still think about them all the time? Yeah, I really, really do. <laughs> then Boys of Bracia High by Megan Brandy. This is a trilogy following the same couple and she is a nobody and she moves in to this foster home situation and these boys run the school. Hell as old as time, am I right? And of course she decides to pick a fight with them on day one and they, you know, battle out and all of this, all of this drama. This is the most over, top, over the top, ridiculous, just, it's a ridiculous series. And you will inhale all three books in like two days. It's that type of thing and like there are three of them there is one scene with all three boys but there is only one boy that she has a relationship with it kind of sounds like why choose but it's not it's one couple and then those guys go on to have their own standalone books afterwards but this uh first three books are about them and the drama i cannot emphasize enough the drama is strong and like criminal over the top, why would you even do that vibes? <laughs> and then lastly, I have Fallen Crest High by Tijin. This is a six book series following the same couple and they are my babies and there's nothing you can say to me to convince me otherwise. This is like dark, like lots of, lots of content warnings, not necessarily really at all between the couple or anything, but just like side characters that like our main character gets injured a lot, there's a lot of reveals, there's a lot of different things where it's difficult scenes but it's not between the main couple. And this is a stepbrother romance and this is my first one and it is still my favorite one and you know, or you might not know, but um, I'm not really big on taboo books. They don't generally work for me. This one does partially because it's a pretty healthy relationship between the two of them and also it's pretty I don't know this is not like a super steamy romance or anything there's like some scenes but not very much it just it's, it covers a few years of them being together and when we meet her mother is moving them in basically she's marrying their father and they don't know each other. They go to different schools. She knows of them, but they don't know each other. And so they meet like right at that 17, 18 age. And she has a romance with the older brother and the younger brother is like her best friend. And they are the, the, like, they're a group that I love. <laughs> I love them so much. I don't know that if you come to me for recommendations that this is going to really work for you because it is, I feel like, slower maybe, or maybe not even as romance focused as a lot of what I prefer is. But also, like, there are some scenes that I just think about all the time. <laughs> think about them all the time. They have just remained my babies for years at this point. And if you hate it, don't tell me. And also I understand, but don't tell me. And I love them, so. That's it. Those are my recommendations for a series with more than one book for one couple. Let me know if you have read or want to read any of these or if you have recommendations for me where you're like they don't take forever to get together, they don't break up constantly, their their relationship beats are good. They, the pacing was good for the amount of books that they had. Now I also love books where whether it's standalone or series, where you get a lot of established couple time, like you do have that build up of them becoming a couple, but you have a nice big section of them as a couple and handling things as a couple. I really love that. So let me know any recommendations you might have. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.